What's going on, everyone? This is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the DFS slate from a pure lineup construction perspective. This is going to be part three of the DFS uh, MMA series. Uh, we did the full picks video, uh, uh, I think it was yesterday. We also did the betting breakdown, but this is the one I'm kind of most mostly proud of, but I think, which is, uh, I think other people should do this, honestly, but nonetheless, I'm doing this and uh, Anyway, as I mentioned before, I feel that it's important to distinguish between the uh, DFS best plays content and the lineup building content, because especially when you're trying to win that big prize, it's just completely different skill sets. I mean, you do need to know who the best plays are, but it's all about, you know, how to use your sims, how to use your optimizers, different things you can do if you want to hand build and things like that. And I'd like to separate them. Um I hate to belittle uh, how important it is to come up with the right plays, but quite honestly, that's that's really, really easy. I mean, the metrics just kind of lead you to that. And, you know, when you end up with the same plays everybody else kind of has. I mean, but, I mean, you guys want to know who the best plays are. I mean, we want to pick you know, someone from this main event, uh, Duplices, uh, or Strickland, it doesn't really matter. Uh, Malcolm Gordon, he's should be... Two, two to one, and he's being priced as if he's about pick him, and he's got to get inside the distance prop. So uh, he's a good play. Uh, Lioness, he's 8,400 with an inside the distance line of about minus 110, which should probably be the same thing if he were 9,100. So he's a good play. Uh, either of these two big favorites, Robertson or what's his name? Uh, Robertson or Matt, Mike Malott? They both have very strong inside the distance lines. They have some grappling upsides. I mean, either of them is a good play. Um, Evluev, 8,700. Uh, he's got, he can get 10 takedowns. Uh, he's got just an incredible ceiling. He's a really good play. And you want one just to fill this out just for fun? Uh, Tavares, I mean, he's 7,300. And he has an inside the distance line of what, about plus 250 or something like that? So he's a really, really strong play. So I mean, you could you can make strong plays really, really easily. But when you're playing the the, the GPPs that require you to beat, you know, ten thousand people, then you have to worry more about how to you know how to avoid getting duped and how to chop it, how to avoid chopping it with like 40, 50 people. So it just requires a little bit of a different skill set. So what we're going to do is we are going to go through this process using SaberSim, and we're going to show you, again, the different ways to rank the lineups that I think are playable in, in 150 max. And that's what we're going to focus on today, is just how to win the, or how to win the most money, I guess, in that big 150 max lottery. So you have to start, right, with, with some kinds of projections that are decent. Like the, here, here are the SaberSim ones, they're already in here. Um, I have... You know, the true DFS ones kind of aggregate the industry and also, you know, put my own little tweak on them a little bit. So, I mean, we could put mine in here just for the hell of it. But you could, whatever projections you are, you have, make sure that they're reasonable. Uh, and ownership projections, make sure that they're reasonable. Because what we're going to be doing is not only projecting points, but we're also going to be projecting how owned your lineups are going to be. And once we start filtering them, uh, we're going to try to get rid of the the high owned lineups that really don't project all that much better uh, to really, you know, boil it down. Um, okay. So we start by, up, you know, uploading the projections and then we just have to just start by, by building 150. Um, and when I say building 150, I don't mean actually that. I mean, we're going to build 5,000 lineups and we're going to rank the top 150. And how we rank them is really the art of this line of construction process, okay? Until we get into kind of post-build tweaks, which we will get to. So the first thing is what default do we start with, all right? And if you're using SaberSim, you want to start with the 150 max default. Now we're going to mess around with this after we do the initial builds, but this is at least the way to start. So we're going to hit build lineups and it's going to build 5,000 lineups. Um, and then we're going to play around with how we rank them. This is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to pause this for until it comes back, and I'll be right back.
All right, so we've run our 5,000 lineups, and before you guys get all bent out of shape with, with what we're getting here, it's important to know what we're looking at. So we're looking at the top 150 lineups, but what's important to know is how they're being ranked exactly. So there's a lot of different ways that you can rank your top 150 out of that group of 5,000. And this first ranking here that you'll get when you do SaberSim is MMA default. Now, for those of you that are just new to this, um, it's important to know what this is because this is a very important way of ranking lineups that, uh, well, let's get into it. Within Saber, Sim, Saber Score, it has MMA default. And when you click the I, it'll actually go into what this is. And to, to spare you all the details, I will tell you that this is just about the most aggressive way to rank lineups. Like this is this formula when you factor in just the 99th percentile lineups and then you deal with the adjusted ownerships and 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 some some of my projections, uh whatever. Um this leads you to a portfolio of lineups which is about as unique as you can get. Um and as far as how they rank, as far as, you know, just median projections, they're usually not the best, okay? But when you're trying to build for 150 max, there's a certain degree of wisdom uh, attached to playing this way. Um, so if you are very, very aggressive and you want this particular setting and this particular min unique setting, is about as aggressive as you're going to make it without, you know, manually tweaking ownership, which we're going to do later. Okay. Um, so I'm not saying that this is the right way to play or the wrong way to play, but this is a very aggressive way to play just to just run your, run your, run your, not even your Sims yet, run your lineups, rank them by MMA default, make min uniques only one. Okay. So you're not even becoming, you're not even spreading out your, your love a little bit and you just pile. All right. And you're going to lose this way a lot. Okay. But when you do win, I mean, you're, you're going to get it all. I mean, I would, I would, I would bet that this group of 150, for example, would probably be 90%. No, I wouldn't say 90%, but may, maybe close as far as unique or at the very worst, you know, five uniques or less. So if you just want to stop here, that's 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 great, okay? Um, before we get into the next set of rankings, another thing you could do if you like this set or if you like this approach, but you want to spread out a little bit more is is you, you mess around with this min unique stuff. So here, it gives you, now it makes a rule from that 5,000 that you, it's got to be, uh, yeah, you at least have to have two different fighters in each line. Okay. And then here we go here, min uniques three. Now you'll notice that the my lineups went down to 136, which means that you can't even get a hundred and more than 136 lineups from this set with min uniques more than two. So you would probably go back to min uniques two and put this in as is. Okay. So and you'll see what happens. You know, the, the exposures crunch up a little bit or whatever, whatever you want. So that's, this is like the next level of, this is the next level of aggression without doing stuff yourself. Now we, we can, we're going to do stuff ourselves in a minute, but that's the first thing is looking at it from MMA default. Next thing I want to look at is when you rank them by MMA Sim Diversity 10. All right. So, what this is, this ranking is, for lack of a better description, the ranking of lineups that have the best plays. Okay. Um, yes, it does give you some degree of upside, some degree of, you know, some degree of ownership fade maybe, but the MMA Sim Diversity 10 is the, is the just what are really the best plays and the top 150 lineups of the best place. So you'll see the guys I mentioned before, like the Triple C's, Strickland. You have the guys from the main events, the five-round fights, and there's Gordon, 
you know, Leonese I mentioned before. Um, not even too much Tavares. That's interesting. Anyway, um, so if you wanted to do this, this is certainly fine, right? Let's go back to Minion Each One first. And and this is this is fine. And these are this is probably your best way to maximize your chances of of hitting the optimal. Okay. Uh, if you wanted to do nothing other than hit the optimal, this is probably the best uh the best portfolio of lineups when you when you're dealing with Sabres to, to make that happen. However, uh I will say that based on my experience, like if you play this way, it's gonna be very, very difficult to be unique. Very difficult. Like these are within this this portfolio of lineups are gonna be the most duped lineups on the board. Okay. So um I would not recommend sticking with a portfolio that looks like this for 150 max. Um, and and again, if you want to be even more conservative, you could go min uniques two, right? Min uniques three, same as before. We can only go one thir 113, so we go min uniques two, and then you get, you know, even a little more, a little less risky version of the less risky portfolio. So, I think that that this is probably the, it's the it's the weakest attempt to win, to play the 150 that I would actually support. Like I don't, I wouldn't mind playing this way. I got if someone uh, built good projections, good ownerships, ran it and said I'm going to play the 150 this way. I think it's okay. Um, I'm just a little more aggressive. I, I really want to. I, I just feel there's just so much more chaos in MMA than the projections will support. That I would prefer to go for the unique route. Um, but this is totally fine. Um, next thing I want to do is run the contest since. So again, for those who are here for the first time, what we did, we already put these in. So we're going to, what we're going to do is we are going to create fields of lineups for specific contests that we're entering. And what that is designing designed to do is give us kind of like a target to compare our lineups to. So this way, if we say, you know, take it to extreme that we build a field of lineups for the lottery that's got 99% of one fighter for some reason, then we know not to play them, okay? Because that's going to affect our ROI. So, and this is a very, very new, well, it's an old uh, discipline, but it's a new one as far as its development in in, in legal, in, in, um, in DFS. So this is not perfect, but this is what all the sites are putting out now. Is, is running these contest simulations. And they're all based on, well, I mean, if you know what your field of lineups you're up against is, then it's not that difficult to run a sim. You know what I mean? Like then it's really just math, but the, the difficulty in creating that field of lineups properly is very, very challenging. So like, for example, and we're gonna run this, but if you look at the settings here, you'll see that Saberson does have kind of these default settings for particular contests. Well, I should say default settings. It fills in the contest size, percent for first, and whatever. And then when it's asking what field of lineups to put in, for MMA, it's not like football and baseball. Football and baseball, they have these preset fields. Um, in MMA, they kind of default to Saberson ownership, which means that Whatever the Saber Sim ownership projections are, that's what's going to reflect what the field of lineups are going to look like. So, uh, no, it's not perfect. And the other thing you should be aware of is that if you have your own ownership projections or you think the field's going to put different lineups together than just straight Saber Sim ownership, then you got to change this. Okay. And we'll show you how to do that as well. But this is fine. But you are relying on Saber Sim ownership projections being correct or being close to uh, to play this way. Um, and we set the lineups for you know, all the different contests we're in, which are the lottery. Uh, we're, uh, we're also playing the qualifier and the knockout. So let's just run the contest sim just like this. So what it's doing right now is it is calculating those fields of th those lineup fields and it's figuring out what they are. And the reason why it's doing that is so that when we 
then re-rank these 5,000 lineups. We're going to rank them against the particular lineups, excuse me, against the particular uh, contest fields that we are now having Saberson create for us. Okay. So that was really quick, by the way. Uh, they, they really improved their, uh, they really improved that, the speed of that. So let's, uh, let's, let's, let's get in there and let's rate these by, this is the MME, this is the lottery. And what we're going to do, we're going to do is we're, we're going to rank it by risk adjusted ROI, right? So we are re-ranking all these lineups based on risk adjusted ROI. And this is kind of what you're getting, right? Now you'll know just by eyeballing it that you'll know just by eyeballing it that it does have like again like the good plays, okay? So uh, I hate to put it this way, but if the lineups, if if a line, if a portfolio of lineups have nothing but the good plays, it's not going to be unique. It just isn't. Um, so this is one thing that the the contest sims have really not done the greatest job with uh and that is actually predicting uniqueness okay like it says here dupes dupe zero but that's 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 a uh that's a pipe dream like this lineup here if this particular lineup for example were were zero dupes i would i would eat my hat there's literally no chance um so we're now at a point where we have to make some some tweaks. We have to make some changes to our lineup constructions um, to try to get unique, but again, not get too too ballistic, right? So there are two ways, two important ways to get unique artificially. One is uh, to leave money on the salary, leave salary on the table on purpose okay as opposed to like this like this first lineup you see here 48.9 that wasn't leaving salary on the on the table on purpose that was just leaving salary on the table that just happened organically all right so what i mean is is forcing us to leave money on the table and that is one way that you can get unique because you know you can still have higher own guys but just not in the same combinations you know and if you leave money on the table that is a way to do it um issue with that is that we don't really know how much to leave money on the table. Um, I, there are people that, that can try to calculate that better than I can. And so when I do it, when I leave money on the table, it's really just, just guesswork. Okay. I just, just make it up really I, like 48, 9, 49, two, whatever it is. So I don't really like that um, as far as a way to artificially leave money on the table. We'll artificially leave money on the table with the kind of with the, my handbill technique, which I'll talk about in a minute. But aside from that, let's let's talk about this portfolio management strategy. How how do we how are we going to artificially, you know, reduce dupes? And that's when we use geo mean filtering. So what geo mean filtering all that's doing is it's 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 forcing in the lowest, well, not the lowest owned, but the low enough owned lineups such that they rate to not be duped, okay? Or not to be duped that much. So let's, uh, again, for those of you that are not familiar with that, so there's a formula that is just kind of okay, but it's better than nothing, that you can estimate, first of all, what geo mean you need to filter for to give yourself an X amount of dupes or less. Um, and then once you know what that geo mean is, then you could then you could filter for it in your lineup. So let's let's take a look real quick. And again, what you need to know is let's go back is how many players are in the lineup. It's gonna be six. How many entries there are? So let's pull this up. This twenty three thousand five hundred and twenty nine. And one dupe. So. We're looking for a geo mean of 19 or less. Now, again, to put that in perspective, once we, once we start filtering, if we wanted to require five dupes or less, which is totally okay also, then we're talking about a 24 geometric mean. If you wanted to make it 10 or less, then we're at the 27. So depending on how aggressive you want to get, you know, somewhere between a 19 geo mean filter and maybe a 27 geo mean filter, 
What I like to do is kind of get greedy and see if we can't just go for go for the throat and just go for just 18.6, see what we come up with. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's um filter, add filter, geo mean, less than, and let's just say 19, ju just to see if we can get it. Let's see if we can get 150 lineups. See, you can't even get it, okay? Um, so the next thing I would do is I would probably go to my next break point, um, which would be, uh, what would I say, five dupes? I mean, you could just keep going up until you get the amount, amount you want, but let's say five dupes. I think that's reasonable. So 24.4. So let's filter for that. Um, Twenty four point four, and how now you get your hundred fifty laps? Okay, um, so what we've done? Remember what we've done here, right? So, so we we have we have now re ranked <laughs> these 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 five thousand lineups by geo mean filtering. Okay, well we haven't re ranked them; we've just filtered for them. You know, we rated the top 150 by, you know, we rated all of them, really, all 5,000 by contest sim. And then what it's doing is now is just filtering out the ones with a geo mean of less than, you know, less than uh, 24. Um, and then what you could do if you want, if you want to try to get greedy, ooh, we already have been uniques too. That's actually pretty good. So we, well, there's no way we'll get to min uniques three, right? No, but it was close. So if you stick with this, for example, all right, now what you're getting is, well, you're getting good projections, you're getting a good contest sim, and you're filtering for, you know, lineups that are rate to be not duped all that much, okay? Um, so I think this is a very reasonable portfolio of lineups to put in. Now, the one thing that you, you see that we have not talked about yet like at all is who we have and i know this is kind of tough for you guys to deal with but when you're playing 150 you can't you just can't you just can't worry about it you, you, at, at this point like you've already you know made your projection you've made your you, you know you, you filtered you 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 upped your projection if you like the guy these are your projections whatever it is and these guys are already projected for upside and all that stuff um you really just can't mess around at this point. Like you can't really worry about who you have. And I know it sucks. I know you don't want to hear that, but that's just the way for me, it's gotta be with 150. Now then you could, right? You want to go to there. Ooh, I want a little more Garrett Armfield. You know, I'll put more. I want a little less Pollyanna Vienna, you know, or whatever it is, you could certainly do that. But that's just kind of not my thing, right? So this is again, the other, another very aggressive way that you can play because you've done the contest sims and then you can, you know, and then you've, um, you've filtered. I just thought, just to, well, let's put, you want to put those in yet? No, we're not going to, we're not going to put them in yet. Um, but we can save them. So what I like to do is I'll, I'll save these. Let's save these. Well, and we got to call them something, right? We'll call them. Now, if I had already, entered lineups, I would have been able to use the entry editor, but I haven't done that yet. So I'm just saving these off-site as just, just so I remember what they are. And I'm going to change all these as the projections update, obviously, but I mean, this is more, more about process than anything else. So we're going to, we'll call it something we remember, like 150. Um, what's the, what, what's the, um, what's the thing? The um, geo mean 24, right? So it was. So we'll remember what this is. Um, okay. One other trick that I kind of want to get into um, is it's kind of a weird thing you could do from, from a handbill perspective, but let's take a look at the at the ownerships here on some of these fighters, um, specifically the underdogs. So you have 
Malcolm Gordon, 38%. Wow, he's, I think he's going to be higher. How is he only going to be 38%? So you could you could you could tweak that whatever it is. What are the what are so we have Pennington thirty percent. What are some of the other underdogs that are look to be high owned? Um, Pennington, um, Tavares twenty. And everybody else under 20. Okay, so there's no, you don't have that really high owned underdog. Oh, with the exception of, well, obviously Duplessis, if he's considered an underdog, or Strickland, if he's considered an underdog. Let's actually, I was going to use these as an example, but they're, it's a kind of a bad example because I'm actually seeing Duplessis with a higher projection than Strickland. So what I was going to say is not going to really apply. What I was going to say is that if you can get, um, an underdog that's going to be popular, what you can do is play that underdog, but leave enough money on the table where the optimizers would get to the favorite. Because uh, what that'll do is it'll give you a, you know, a, a more, a lesser owned version of a higher owned player or a higher owned fighter, if that makes any sense. So what you can do, for example, I mean, this is, you don't have to do this, but let's say you really like Tavares, but 20% seems too saucy. You don't want to play. Let's say, okay, I got a better one. Uh, Pennington. So Raquel Pennington is 30% owned. And you don't want to play such a high-owned fighter. You'll note that Buena Silva is projecting like 10 points higher. So imagine this. Raquel Pennington is what price? She is, um, let's just see. Raquel Pennington is 7,600, all right? which means obviously that Buena Silva is 8,600. So if you want, I mean, again, don't try this at home, to play Pennington and leave 1,000 on the table, what's going to end up happening is you're going to get Pennington lineups that no one's going to have. Because the optimizers, if you give it an extra 1,000 to play with, is going to get to Buena Silva. And that's what I was kind of getting at. Likewise, you know, if 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 Strickland were higher than Duplessis, what you could, as far as an a um, median projection, you could just play Duplessis, leave two hundred on the table, and you know get a little bit more unique that way. Um, that's pretty much all I have for this week. I mean, nothing really different, except the one thing I would add is that you you did notice that when I did my initial build. I didn't do, uh, I didn't make any changes to their defaults. So one of the things I may have ended up doing, by the way, I might have ended up getting some some stacks. Uh, it's possible. And we can check for that in a minute. Like if I put in, say, Duplicy, would I also be getting any Strickland? Let's see. No, nah, I wouldn't get any today. But last week I was able to, I, I got a couple of stacks. My, my point is, is that I'm not going to tell the the contest sims what to do. I'm not going to tell the algorithm what to do. If if a stack is just happens to do well in this particular card, the way that it's set up, I'm going to play it. It's not often that it does, but if it does show up, I'm just not going to, I'm just not going to mess with it. Um, and that's pretty much all I have for you guys this week, uh, except to say that I'm going to be there. So, uh, Au revoir, <laughs> bon chance, whatever, and uh, good luck.